the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Welcome to our midweek service. The Lord be with you. And we say together our prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Jesus says, come to me all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Let us then show our love for him by confessing our sins in penitence and faith. A moment of silence, we bring to mind those things for which we want to ask God's forgiveness. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour, in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Collect for the Ninth Week of Trinity. Almighty God, who sent your Holy Spirit to be the life and light of your church. Open our hearts to the riches of your grace, that we may bring forth the fruit of the Spirit in love, joy, and peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. This morning's Old Testament reading is taken from Ezekiel. On the fifth day of the month, it was the fifth year of the exile of King Jehoiakim. The word of the Lord came to the priest Ezekiel, son of Buzi, in the land of Chaldeans, by the river Chebar, and the land of the Lord was on him here. As I looked, a stormy wind came out of the north, a great cloud with brightness around it, and fire flashing forth continually. In the middle of the fire, something like gleaming amber. In the middle of it was something like four living creatures. This was their appearance. They were of human form. When they moved, I heard the sound of their wings, like the sound of mighty waters, like the thunder of the Almighty. A sound of tumult, like the sound of an army, when they stopped, they let down their wings, and there came a voice from above, the drone over their heads, when they stopped, they let down their wings. And above the dome, over their heads, there was something like a throne in appearance, like sapphire. And seated above the likeness of a throne was something that seemed like a human form. Upwards from what appeared like the loins, I saw something like gleaming amber. Something that looked like fire enclosed all around. And downwards from what looked like the loins... I saw something that looked like fire, and there was a splendour all around, like the bow in a cloud on a rainy day. Such was the appearance of the splendour all around. This was the appearance 
of the likeness of the glory of the Lord. When I saw it, I fell on my face and I heard the voice of someone speaking. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm is from Psalm 148. Hallelujah! Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise him, all you his angels. Praise him, all his hosts. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you stars of light. Praise him, heaven of heavens and you waters above the heavens. Young men and women, old and young together, let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name only is exalted, his splendour above earth and heaven. Amen. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time the disciples came to Jesus and asked, Who then is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? He called the little child to him and placed the child among them and said, Truly I tell you, unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, whoever takes the lowly position of this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven, and whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. See that you do not despise one of these little ones, for I tell you that their, their angels in heaven always see the face of my Father in heaven. What do you think? If a man owns a hundred sheep, and one of them wanders away, will he not leave the ninety-nine on the hills and go and look for the one that has wandered off? And if, if he finds it, truly I tell you, he is happier about that one sheep than about the ninety-nine that did not wander off. In the same way, your Father in heaven is not willing that any of these little ones should perish. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In today's Gospel, Jesus is the, the comments that Jesus makes on the importance of children and the parable of the lost sheep are meant to emphasize the inclusiveness of God. This parable of uh, the lost sheep challenges our received wisdom. If you were a shepherd, would you really leave 99 sheep at the mercy of wolves and weather and dash off into the wilderness and loot for one silly stray? But that, of course, is the point of a parable. Jesus told these stories to make people think, to make them question their assumptions, and most importantly, to tell us something about the nature of God and God's dealing with each one of us. To God, every person, or metaphorically, a sheep, is important, however silly, whatever scrapes they get themselves into. Every single human being is loved by God, however far they might have wandered from the path, and God will go to any lengths to rescue them. We might not like to think of ourselves as sheep, silly creatures with no mind of their own, but this story is aimed at all those who, like the Pharisees, think themselves above reproach, at all those who cultivate a them and us attitude, and those who put others outside of God's kingdom because they don't measure up to the perceived norms of a society governed by largely made rules of man. Those who put other people into the sinner category because they're different, because they don't match up to our standards, because they're of another race, creed, class, sexuality or gender. And in the case of the Pharisees, those who hold children and women as humans of lesser value. The story of the lost sheep 
gives us the traditional picture of God as a shepherd, familiar to the first listeners from the Hebrew scriptures, our Old Testament. It emphasizes the saving nature of God, who has been saving since the beginning of creation, loving us extravagantly, forgiving us unconditionally, patiently waiting. There are hundreds of testimonies of repentant sinners who turn to Christ and live changed lives. People who were lost and who, many would say, were beyond redemption. I think that the conversion of Paul is one of the most impressive stories of changed lives, from persecutor to preacher in a moment of time. Listen to his confession. Even though I was once a blasphemer and a persecutor and a violent man, I was shown mercy because I acted in ignorance and unbelief. The grace of our Lord was poured out on me abundantly, along with the faith and the love that are in Christ Jesus. Here is a trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the worst. St. Paul was, if you like, the ultimate lost sheep. In the Old Testament, God saved chosen people from slavery in Egypt. And as we recall in the Eucharist today, God saves all people from sin and death through the cross. We are all sinners, but in Jesus, God's love reaches out to each one of us, searching for us until we are found in him. Another example of someone who was saved was John Newton, initially a slave trader and unbeliever, who got caught in a violent storm off the coast of Donegal Island. He says he called on God for mercy and so began his pilgrimage into Christianity, eventually becoming an Anglican priest and writing that now famous hymn, Amazing Grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now I see. We only need to repent, which simply means to recognize that we are lost and to listen for the voice that's calling us in prayer, Bible study, worship, and our everyday life. A voice calling us to the joyful reunion with a mighty God. Amen. This morning's intercessions are as follows. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, you promise that when any two come together in your name, you will be with us in your Holy Spirit. We present our prayers through your Son, Jesus Christ. Hear us as we pray in faith. We extend our prayer for those most in need at this time. We pray that we, as your church, are there for each of them to ease their burden and worries and provide any support they may need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for your church here in Hayside and we thank you, Lord, that we have so many clergy to help and guide us through this time of interregnum. We are grateful for the commitment made over many years and we thank you for all your clergy who support our parishes. We offer our support to that we know that you really are from the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We ask that you redirect all the leaders of the world communities to try to work together to not only defeat the COVID-19 virus and safeguard all your people, but bring reconciliation and healing to the many who are in need. We pray for the people of Beirut as they strive to overcome the loss of loved ones and the devastation caused by last week's explosion. 
We pray that peace may return and solutions found without further violence and insincerity from leaders. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We ask your blessing on all our families and friends and we give thanks for all those people who strive to help those in need. As we go about our daily lives, be in our hearts and minds, Lord, in all we think and do. Give us strength in body and mind to overcome all difficulties that we face. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, stay beside all those who are suffering or sick. Be their protection and their support in their time of need. We remember everyone on our sick list or those known to each one of us. And we bring before you those who are close to our hearts this morning. And we remember Ron and Anne, Louis Todd Hunter, Naomi Clare. And we hold them up to you this morning. Comfort and heal all those who suffer, give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Hear us as we remember all those who have died to this life. May they rest in peace and rise in your glory, Lord. We ask for your blessing and protection, Lord, on those working in our hospitals, care homes and emergency services. Give them courage and hope that they can come through this safe in body, mind, our spirit. According to your promises, grant us with them a share in your eternal kingdom. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now we come to our peace. Once we were far off, but now in union with Christ Jesus, we have been brought near through the shedding of Christ's blood, for he is our peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And now, either virtually or with someone who may be in the room with you, just share God's peace, remembering that his peace surrounds us at all times, especially in our worship. Blessed be God who feeds the hungry, who raises the poor, who fills our praise. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. Our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks holy father almighty and eternal god from sunrise to sunset this day is holy for christ is risen from the tomb and scattered the darkness of death with light that will not fade this day the risen lord walks with your gathered people unfolds for us your word and makes himself known to us in the breaking of the bread and though the night will overtake this day you summon us to live in endless light, the never-ceasing Sabbath of the Lord. And so, with choirs of angels and with all the heavenly hosts, we proclaim your glory and join their unending song of praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread, gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take eat this is my body which is given for you 
do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Jesus Christ is Lord. Lord, by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. You are the savior of the world. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for all and the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption as we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. We bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we, in the company of St. Mark, St. Anne, and all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. So we pray the prayer that our Saviour Jesus Christ taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, redeemer of the world, Grant us peace. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Holy Father, who gathered us here around the table of your Son to share this meal with the whole household of God, in that new world where you reveal the fullness of your peace, gather people of every race and language to share in the eternal banquet of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Loving Father, we thank you for feigning us at the supper of your Son. Sustain us with your Spirit, that we may serve you here on earth until our joy is complete in heaven, and we share in the eternal banquet with Jesus Christ, our Lord. And we say together, Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. And so, 
the God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep. Through the blood of the eternal covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you, your loved ones, and all those for whom you pray, now and always. Amen. Thank you once more for joining us here uh, at our morning service in this uh, time of, uh, of difficulty in our world, even though it is only virtually. And I hope that you feel the power of God and the comfort of, of God in your homes as we do these services. Thank you, as I say, once more for joining us. So go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen.